back. When you are working with group policy objects, it is important to understand the difference between processing and precedence. So I created this diagram. That way you will have a better understanding of what is happening when you create a GPO on your Windows Server. When a device like a computer connect to your network, the first thing it's going to do, it's going to process any local policies. The local group policies are basically registry edits. Then it looks for any other local databases available, such as Citrix servers, etc., etc., And those policies then get updated and override the whatever the local policy within your device. Then it looks for any site GPOs and domain GPOs and organizational unit GPOs within the Active Directory group policy objects on your server. So in other words, it takes the local policies first, apply them and look for any other policies in local databases and apply next and then site GPOs, domain GPOs and organizational unit GPOs apply uh, you know, in that order. Every single time one of these policies get updated in each of these steps, if those policies are overriding the previous policies, it's just simply going to overwrite whatever that is already there. In other words, let's say I have a local policy uh, saying that my background image should be this, but my organizational unit policy says something else because the order of processing goes from local policies to other policies, to site GPOs, to domain GPOs, to OUs, organizational unit GPOs, this will take the precedence. Another way of explaining this is, let, let's say if I apply a specific background image to all my end users within a specific organizational unit in here. But then I also have a background image applied to domain or GPO as well. In this situation, again, the organizational GPO take precedence over the domain GPO. So what users going to see is the background image policy that is applied here at the, uh, uh, at the organizational level, organizational unit level, rather than what they were, you know, what is applied here at the domain group policy level. So if I have two different images applied at domain GPO and organizational unit GPO, what users going to see is whatever the image apply at the organizational unit level GPO. Again, so when your computer first boot up, it look at your local registry keys, which are local policies. And you're going to apply those information first, then you're going to apply whatever the local database. But if this local database have any policies that are going to override the local policies, it's going to override here. And then it's going to look for any site GPOs, again, overriding whatever happened previously. Then it's going to look for domain GPOs, overriding whatever happened in the site GPO and the previous GPOs. And finally, it's going to apply the organizational unit. So in other words, in terms of processing of your GPOs, it start from local to local databases to site, domain, organizational unit. But in terms of precedence, whatever we are dictating on the organizational unit level gonna take precedence over everything else happened before it. Because these things get processed and overridden by the other items coming along this way, right? So if you have a local policy and if that local policy get overridden by the organizational unit policy, whatever happened here doesn't matter anymore. So keep that in mind. It is very important that you understand when it's come to the point group policy objects or GPOs, the processing happened from local to site to domain to organizational unit, but the precedence is always the organizational unit policies take over everything else. Also keep in mind the site GPOs, domain GPOs and organizational GPOs are belong to your active directory group policy objects, which is part of your domain. 
Now I will show you a quick demonstration of this on my Windows Server 2022. Here we are at the Group Policy Management Console of my Windows Server. On the left hand side, we see we have the forest named sanuja.local and we have a domain called sanuja.local and underneath that domain, we have the organizational unit called netitgeeks. And within this organizational unit, I have a couple of other organizational units such as accounting, content creation, etc. And in here, under group policy objects, we see all the group policies that we have created or came with the domain by default. For example, we have the default domain policy apply way up here and it is listed here as a default domain policy down here at the, under the group policy objects. Within these organizational units, on my previous demonstration, I have applied few group policies to content creation group and IT group. So the organizational unit content creation and organizational unit IT have some group policies applied to them. So if you look at the group policy for wallpapers, you can see that I have applied the IT wallpaper group policy right here to the IT organizational unit. For content creation organizational unit, I have applied the content creation wallpaper group policy right here. So this group policy only impacting the content creation organizational unit and users and devices within that organizational unit. And this group policy, the IT wallpaper only impacting the users within the IT organizational unit, users and computers within that organizational unit. However, if I apply a wallpaper policy at the domain level, right here, for example, at the sanuja.local, and or if I edit this default domain policy and add a wallpaper policy to this particular group policy object, it will not impact the group policies down here. So if I have a default wallpaper for all my users within my domain up here, apply under the sanuja.local domain, it will not have any impact on content creation group or organizational unit and the IT organizational unit. Why? Because remember from my previous slide that I showed you, the precedence in which the group policy object rules gonna take over state that any group policies apply to organizational unit or sub-organizational unit or child organizational unit take precedent over whatever the group policies apply up here. Because the processing happen from here, top down, and keep going down and keep overriding anything above it. Even if I apply a group policy object to net IT geeks organizational unit, because IT and content creation organizational units are child organizational unit within the net IT geeks organizational unit. Whatever the policies for wallpapers applied here, down here, gonna get overridden up uh, here. So whatever happened up here. So if there is a wallpaper policy under net IT geeks organizational unit, it doesn't matter to content creation group and the IT group because these two policies gonna take over for those organizational units. However, if you look at human resources, a chart, it doesn't have any organizational uh, groups attached um, GPOs. As a result, if I have a policy apply up here for wallpaper, because the human resources OU doesn't have a group policy attached with related to wallpapers, in that situation, whatever the wallpaper policy apply up here will apply to our organizational unit human resources because it doesn't have anything else under a HR organizational unit to override the group policies applied up here. So keep that in mind. So if you have an 
a GPO that can override whatever the policies up here within your organizational unit or child organizational unit whatever the child organizational unit one going to take precedent over everything else but if there are no gpos under child or main organizational units then whatever the default domain policies uh, po uh, rules going to take uh, precedent in that case but at the end of the day what's really important is here that you need to understand the last process group policy object which are child organizational units group policy objects or organizational unit group policy objects take precedence over everything else. So let's look at this from our local computer point of view. So let's go to my Windows 11 machine and I am logged in as the domain administrator here because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see some of the options. And I'm going to go uh, Windows R which will open the run command and I'm going to go to rsop.msc rsop.msc will open resultant set of policies in other words resultant set of policies that are now active in this particular end device which is a combination of kind of local group policies and whatever the group policies pushed by the domain as you can see in here if i go under the user configuration section I'll make this a little bigger and under Windows settings we can see there is a security settings apply and you can see there are some security rules and policies apply right here and it, there are enforcement done in these uh, levels and you can see that being pushed by our server so these policies basically overwritten any local policies that contain within this machine. So even if I go to software settings or anything else like even administrative templates, you can see there are certain policies uh, that been applied to this device because this is connected to a domain and the organizational units resultant policies uh, going to be the you know final say in here. You can also see the same thing if we run with the, uh, the run command and type gpedit.msc and click OK. That will open the group policy editor and you can see the local group policies here but however they are being overridden by the policies that being pushed by the group policy management we are doing on the uh, domain controller. This is because this device is connected to that server and that you know that will take precedent over everything else so that's everything for today i will leave you with this diagram which is very useful if you are taking any exams or you are working on a windows server and as i shown on my previous demonstration that it or you for example within sanjay.local will have the final say in how the group policies are applied to your end device the way that I have set up myself. So until next time, please make sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel and have a nice day.